Hi guys. So we are going to be reading Penguins by Gail Gibbons. And before we begin, I want you to know that Gail Gibbons, as a young child, had so many questions. And she had so many questions that she knew she wanted to help other children who probably had the same questions that she did when she was a kid. So that's why Gail writes children's books about topics that would be interesting to children like yourself. So I know now, looking at this cover, that we are going to be reading about penguins, and it's going to answer a lot of questions you might have right now. So let's get into it. Penguins by Gail Gibbons. Here come the penguins, straight and tall. They walk with a waddle, yet they look stately and dignified. So they're proud. There are 17 types of penguins. The smallest is the blue penguin. That's not it. It's not on this page. It is about one foot tall. The biggest of all penguins is the emperor penguin. It's about four feet tall. All penguins have black or bluish gray backs and white bellies. The patterns around their necks and heads are what make them different. Some have colorful patches, others show off brightly colored crests, but they all have the same basic body shape and characteristics. So it's saying they all might look a little bit different, but they all have the same body parts and characteristics. So they all have a beak, they all have eyes, they have wings, bellies, throats, um, neck, and back. And I'm noticing there's a lot of similarities, especially about the size. Um, some are all the same size, but some are a little bit bigger. But there's a lot of differences, too. Look at the patterns on this penguin versus this penguin and the colors. All penguins are found on the southern hemisphere. Do we live on the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere? We live on the northern hemisphere, so we will not see penguins in the wild. Now, this is super interesting. This is if you are looking at the earth. Under, if you were underneath the earth. So you're looking up at this earth from underneath and you're noticing Antarctica is right in the middle. The Adelie and Emperor penguins never leave Antarctica. Others live in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, South America, and the Galapagos Islands. Penguins are birds, and they have lost their ability to fly millions of years ago. Over time, they began to spend a lot of time hunting for food in frigid waters. Their wings changed into powerful, rigid flippers for swimming. Penguins have sleek, smooth bodies that glide easily through the water. They are excellent swimmers and divers. Larger ones can swim faster than 25 miles an hour. The emperor penguin can dive deeper than any other bird, about 1,500 feet. Penguins can swim very quickly. 25 miles an hour is about how fast a car goes in the street of Boston. Groups of penguins may stay at sea for weeks at a time. They leap in graceful arcs, so an arc is up and down, uh, through the water to grab breaths of air. Penguins feed underwater on krill, fish, and other sea creatures. Their natural enemies are fur and leopard seals, sea lions, sharks, and killer whales. So all of these enemies down here that are labeled, I see that killer whale label, the shark label, the leopard seal label, and the sea lion label, oh, and the fur sea label, these are enemies. This is who eats penguins. But I'm noticing this is what a penguin eats. It's a krill, and it's very tiny. When the penguins want to leave the water, they can leap up as much as six feet onto a rocky shore or iceberg. They climb rocks easily, hopping from one to the other. Sometimes, penguins speed over snow and ice by dropping onto their bellies and sliding. A penguin's many feathers are small and stiff. They form a warm and waterproof covering. In really cold places, penguins have an extra layer of long, downy feathers underneath. They also have thick layers of fat to keep them warm. 
so they are protected from that cold water. Once a year, many penguins come together to form colonies called rookeries. It is time for the penguins to mate and raise their young. At this time, they make loud croaking and trumpeting sounds. Most of the time, penguins are quiet. So now they are going to come together into a colony. What a noisy place a rookery is with all those harsh penguin calls. There can be hundreds, sometimes thousands of penguins in a rookery. They have no trouble finding mates. While courting, they, ch they chase while courting, they chase each other. Sometimes they hold their wings away from their bodies and hold their beaks up high. Usually the same pair mates and raises its young together. So they're courting here and their bodies are together and their beaks are up high. It is time to build their nests. Some penguins make their nests in burrows or rocky crevices. Others build nests in the open using sticks and grasses. Some arrange small stones in a circle. The two biggest penguins, the emperor penguin and the king penguin, don't build nests. Look where they live. Could they build nests? Hmm, I'm looking at this picture where there's lots of things to build a nest with and this picture where it's just snow and ice. I can't build a nest from snow and ice. Soon after the nest is built, it is egg laying time. Most penguins usually lay two eggs. While one parent keeps the eggs warm, incubating them, the other one searches for food. Incubation can last 30 to 60 days, depending on the kind of penguin. The penguins fiercely guard the eggs and their nesting territory. So they're keeping those eggs warm by sitting on them or incubating them. King penguins and emperor penguins lay only one egg. The female quickly passes her egg over to the male. He carries the egg on top of his feet. The egg is kept warm by a flap on his belly called a broad pouch. He carefully waddles around short distances without dropping the egg. During incubation time, the female swims out to sea to feed. Sorry, this is a brood pouch. Miss Isabel makes mistakes too. Brood pouch. Look at that double O. So the, the male or the dad holds the egg while the female or the mom goes to sea and gets food to eat. The male emperor penguins gather together in the cold, dark polar winter. The temperature can get as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. They protect themselves by huddling close together, constantly moving from the inside to the outside of the group and back to the inside to stay warm. During this time, they don't eat. They fast living off stored body fat and can lose up to 45% of their body weight. So these are all the dad penguins and they are forming a circle. On the inside of the circle are some penguins and on the outside are some penguins. Um, what they do is they switch places so that they don't get too cold and they don't eat that whole time. So they are living off what they have in their bodies. After about 65 days, the egg hatches. The female returns around this time. It is her turn to care for the chick. She tucks it under her brood pouch to keep it warm. Then the male emperor penguin is free to swim out to sea and eat. So the chick hatches and the mom comes back. The chick weighs about 11 ounces and is covered in gray, soft down. The mother has food in her belly. When the chick is hungry, the mother throws up or regurgitates a meal for it. So this is just like a regular bird. A bird will regurgitate its meal for her chicks. When the father returns, both parents take turns feeding and keeping the chick warm. The chick grows. When it's about eight weeks old, it weighs around four pounds. Now the chick is too big to stay under its parents' brood pouches. So he's coming out of those pouches because he's too big. The chicks begin to gather into groups called crushes. They huddle together to stay warm. When the sun shines, they scurry around getting stronger and practicing their balance. So there's that group of penguins. It's called a crash. When the parent returns, it calls with a cry. Only its chick knows. The chick rushes to its parent. Meal time. The chick is fed one huge meal every few days. 
it takes time for the parents to make each trip out to sea for food. So every few days, this baby chick eats. So it's not every day. All penguins are raised in similar ways. When the chicks are three to 10 months old, they begin to lose their gray down and grow adult feathers. Now they are called fledglings. And I can see there's that label fledgling. And I'm noticing in this illustration, I'm noticing that there are the gray feathers, but there are all those black adult feathers underneath. And I'm noticing that for all of these ones too. They're losing their gray little baby feathers and they're growing their adult feathers. So they too can go in that cold, cold water. Off they go to live on their own. They learn how to hunt and survive without the help of their parents. In about four years, they will return to raise their own young. So it takes four years for them to come back and have an egg of their own. At one time, so this is where it gets a little sad. At one time, the number of penguins was declining or going down. Eggs were harvested and penguins were hunted for their skins. Their fat was boiled down to make oil. That's so sad. Today, penguins are in danger. Sometimes oil spills coat their feathers. Overfishing reduces their food supply. They get tangled in fishing nets. Tourists can do harm to colonies of penguins by disturbing them. So this is an oil spill, which is very dangerous. They can get caught in fishing nets and then tourists who come and disturb their colonies are very dangerous as well. Now there are laws to protect them. People work together to help penguins survive in our modern world. Some areas have been named penguin sanctuaries. So it's illegal or against the law to go to a penguin sanctuary if you do not have permission. Penguins can be found in zoos and aquariums. People working there care for the penguins in a clean, safe environment. It is fun to watch penguins play. Who's ever seen the penguins at the New England Aquarium? They are so much fun to watch. They're so tiny and they swim and jump everywhere. It's so cute. Now this last page isn't a glossary. It isn't an index. It's like a fun fact page. It says penguins, penguins. And it says the first penguins lived about 40 million years ago. Prehistoric penguins stood about six feet tall. That's as tall as, like, it's taller than me. It's as tall as an average male. King penguins can live to be 20 years old. The largest penguin is the emperor. It can weigh about 90 pounds. The smallest penguin is the little blue or fairy penguin. It weighs about three pounds. And then here, there are 17 kinds of penguins. The five not illustrated earlier in the book are the erect crested penguin, the fjordland penguin, the snares crested penguin, and the Peruvian penguin. And this is the royal penguin. I think I missed that one. So there's some more fun facts. Now I want you to um, go back and I want you thinking about what does Gail Gibbons do as an author? And I want you thinking about penguins. So go back to Class Dojo and answer your question.